Only about 12% of adults in the US consume the recommended daily intake of fruits and vegetables. But of course, fruits and veggies are an essential part of a healthy diet. So what can we do? Now I know that eating healthy is often easier said than done. And that's why I try and make it as convenient as possible. And for me, the best way that I've found to do that is through meal prep. Take this as an example. Which of these would you rather eat? Oh, not this one? Let me tell you, I spent a lot of time last year working on my meal prep game. Now, this is actually something I started a long, long time ago, but admittedly, I fell off the consistency wagon for a few years. During my weight loss journey, which you can actually watch here, I just found myself needing that simplicity and that ability to have healthy meals on demand. This was actually a huge part of why I think my weight loss was successful. And when I started sharing about it on here, on this channel, a lot of people told me that they wanted to try it out as well. So what exactly is meal prep? Meal prep is simply the concept of preparing whole meals or dishes ahead of schedule. Now this could be full meals, it could be side dishes, or in my world, it could even be a veggie prep, which is like washing and chopping your vegetables. I have kind of taken the term meal prep and transformed it to mean any kind of food prep you do in advance to make your life easier. And that's because a lot of people do turn their nose up when they first hear the words meal prep because they think it means the exact same meal eaten seven days in a row with absolutely no variety. And while some people really do love that kind of simplicity and there's nothing wrong with that, that definitely doesn't have to be what meal prep is. So instead, I like to think of meal prep in three different categories. First is the traditional meal prep that most people think of. That would be planning out meals for the whole week and preparing them in advance. Now, even though people usually think that looks like this, you definitely don't have to eat the same thing for five days in a row, even if you're doing a traditional style meal prep. I think it's actually important to note here that even a traditional meal prep can be flexible and it just takes a little bit of creativity for the day that you're doing the prep work. But even if you don't have time to do a full-on meal prep, or maybe that style just doesn't work for you, you can do instead what I like to call a batch prep. Make a big batch of healthy grains, some beans, tofu, maybe some roasted veggies or some steamed veggies. And this way you'll still have some combining to do throughout the week, but you won't have nearly as much cooking. So this option is going to provide a lot of flexibility for those who want to save time, but also want to switch up their meals throughout the week. Now, even when using this method, I still suggest you write out some kind of a general plan of meal ideas and that's for two reasons. Number one, when you make your shopping list, you want to have a good idea of what you need so that you buy the right things and that you don't overspend especially now with prices rising. And second of all, when it comes time to actually make the meals, you don't wanna be staring at a fridge full of side dishes thinking, what the heck am I gonna make with these? Now, if I don't have time to cook even just a few things at the beginning of the week, the most important Sunday staple for me is to wash and chop my vegetables. Actually, this one practice alone probably doubled my vegetable consumption last year because it is just so easy to incorporate. So this is what I recommend to most beginners because if you're trying to eat healthier or just incorporate more vegetables into your diet, it is just such a simple technique. It is fast, it is easy, and it makes sure that you use up the vegetables that you buy at the grocery store instead of letting them sit and wilt at the back of the fridge and then throwing them out a week later. We've all been there, right? Now, of course, if you choose the wash and shop technique, you will still have to cook and put things together to get your meals ready. But I always just find that the most laborious and disliked part of a meal prep is to do the washing and chopping of the vegetables. So this just gets it out of the way for the rest of the week. Now, the one exception to this rule is when I have vegetables that can sit in the fridge for a long time untouched. So for example, I often buy large bags of carrots, beets, bell peppers, and celery. And these are all vegetables that can sit in the fridge untouched for a minimum of one week sometimes longer depending on the vegetable. So what I like to do with those is just wash and chop what I need. Usually it's about half the quantity of the bag and the others I will leave untouched in the fridge for the following week's prep. I've even done this with things like romaine lettuce, which typically people think goes bad really quickly, but I just pull off the outer leaves, wash and chop those and store those inner leaves untouched whole in the fridge until the following week. Now, if you've made it this far in the video and you'd be interested in doing a small meal prep challenge with me, just something free that would get you started on your meal prep journey, comment the word challenge down below. Now, when you set aside some time each week to plan out your meals, 
Do not forget the snacks. This is what is going to help you avoid those unhealthy options when you are short on time or feeling hungry. In fact, if you need some super easy snack ideas, this video here has a free printable guide with 20 different healthy snack recipes that are all easy and delicious. So go check that one out next. And with that, let's eat plants and I'll see you guys next time.